ceiling is currently $16.699 trillion. We've already reached that amount, and we're set to start running out of money on October 17th. So if we don't raise our debt limit by then, we default on our debts and our checks start bouncing. The U.S. Treasury issued a report saying in the event of a default, the U.S. economy could be plunged into a recession worse than anything we've seen since the Great Depression. That would be terrifying, except for the fact that this happens over and over again. Since 1960, Congress has raised the debt ceiling 78 times. And yet still, the media and the government go into histrionics every time we approach the limit. This time around, our Congress is once again politicizing the debt limit for the benefit of their own parties. Republicans are loving it as a talking point against spending money on Obamacare. Democrats are loving it as a talking point against the big baby that the Republican Party has become. In all of the hysteria, people have started to call on President Obama to invoke the 14th Amendment to bypass the debt limit altogether. The 14th Amendment was ratified in 1868. America was just getting off the ground, so our forefathers thought it might be a good idea to write something on the importance of the U.S. paying its bills. The language from this amendment states that the validity of the public debt of the United States shall not be questioned. It's a fancy way of saying, hey America, don't be a jerk, pay off your debts. When the 14th Amendment was written, I'm pretty sure this isn't what the writers had in mind. I'm pretty sure they weren't thinking, hey, our political parties will become complete babies who will use any system of checks and balances as a way to give their party more power and better talking points. Regardless of the original intention, the writers of the 14th Amendment seem to have been extremely prescient in writing it. Clearly, they realized that we would need someone to tell us Hey, morons, stop spending what you don't have and pay off your debt. Think about your grandchildren and the debt you are forcing them to inherit. Too bad 250 years later in the U.S., we neither care about the future of our grandchildren, nor do we care to heed the wisdom of our grandfathers. Our spending knows no limits. Tonight, let's talk about that by following me on Twitter at the resident.